Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the call tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about how to write good ad copy. We all know that uh, one of the great things about our organization is that uh, we bring people to us who are interested in what we have. And tonight we're going to teach you how to uh, increase your numbers by putting the right ad out there. And we have a, a couple of specialists on the line who have chosen this particular topic uh, to be experts at. And so without any further delay, please help me welcome uh, Edward Ram and Jeff Glacken. Hey, thank you, Larry. Thank you very much, all of you, for joining us on this call today. Uh, we will give you some useful and practical information about how to write an effective headline and an ad copy. Now, you know, we all know that in order to build this business, we have to tell people about our products and our opportunity. People have to know that, that we exist and we have something good to offer them. Now, the best way to do this is through advertising. Whether you use paid ads or free methods, whether you use magazines, signs, posters, or the internet. Now, writing an ad comes easily to some people, but you know, for many of us, writing a good ad copy is challenging. Now, guys, the first and most important thing you have to remember is who are you writing the ad for, okay? It is the customer. Talk to your customer. Avoid focusing on yourself. Tell your customer how they will benefit from using your product. Use the word you, and you can be certain you are speaking directly to your customer. They are the most important person here. Now, secondly, and the, another thing that you have to remember is why are you writing the ad? Okay? Why are you writing the ad? It is to get that person to click on your ad and to go to the website. You have to let the website do the selling for you. Now, the job of the ad that you are creating is not to sell something directly to the customer when they are searching, but rather to get them onto your website so that they can get all the information directly from the fantastic recruiting and retailing sites that we have. So having given you that information, how are we going to do this? Well, first of all, the ad must be believable. And starting with the most important part of your ad, the headline. It must be believable, and it must grab the customer's attention. Now, the way to attract attention is with a bang-up headline. Now, think about yourself for a second. You know, most of us, most people skim when reading online. So the headline needs to stop them in their tracks and attract enough attention so they want to read more. Now, many of you have heard of Dale Carnegie. He knew the secret of a good headline. And that's one reason his book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, has sold more than 15 million copies. In fact, the British Airways recently named it the business book of the 20th century. Now, it's a great book, but if Dale had titled it uh, something like How to Remember People's Names and Curb Your Incessant Urge to Argue, do you think it would have sold as well? Probably not. I mean, there is great power in good titles and in good headlines. What you may not realize is the words how to win friends and influence people are not only the title of the book, those words were also the headline of a mail order ad which sold the book. And the ad ran successfully for many years and sold hundreds of thousands of copies of the book. So how can you use this information to your advantage and turn your advertising into website signups every day? Okay, let's see the formula at work. Now, in our business, we are looking for people interested in working from <coughs> home. Our goal is to attract people to the online website. And let's say you decide to run an ad on a work from home website. Here's how you could use this formula to write a headline for your ad. For example, you could say something like, 
how to stay at home and make more money. Now right away, anyone who's even a little interested would read your ad, and then if the rest of your ad is even halfway decent, you'd get plenty of hits. Or let's say you run an ad for retail but also want to promote the business opportunity. You could say something like, how to stay fit and make more money. Do you see how powerful that is? You've just zeroed in on people who are likely to be interested in staying fit and making more money. You know, guys, the brutal reality of advertising is an ad with a good headline and even mediocre copy will get you a response and generate sales. But you know, if an ad has a poor headline and even the most brilliant copy, you will get little or no response. Why? Because without a good headline to get people's attention, most people won't read any further. Now the good news is, once you have identified a good headline that works in one industry or one market, you can adapt it, you know, like we did with the Gail, Dale Carnegie headline above. You know, and you can use that for your own business. Great headlines work as you know, subject lines and emails. They can work as titles on web pages and, of course, as headlines in print and on Internet advertising. You know, one of the things that I do is I copy from posters that I see around town, whether I am at the bank or the grocery store or the post office or even when I'm surfing on the net for places to put ads. And, you know, it doesn't matter where I get the ideas from. If the ad gets my attention, I copy it, I file it away in a Word document for future reference. You know, you know, for most people, if you tell them how you're going to solve a problem for them, how you're going to prevent them from having a problem in the first place, they will stop and look at your ad. Now, Jeff will go over some other ways to improve your headline. Thank you, Edward, and, and, and thank all of you for joining us on the call today. Uh, when you're writing ads, you'll want to use words that jump off the page and get people excited. And there are many hot words <clears throat> that have been proven to grab a person's attention better than others. You need to use these in your headlines, too. Words like discover, go, click, etc. You get the idea. Your headline should convey your strongest benefit. Benefits play on the reader's emotions, and that's, what's get the, that's what gets them into the act. Tell the reader how the product or opportunity will help them meet their goals, alleviate their fears, help them save time or money, or, or basically just become the solution to their problems. If your headline fails, they will never read the rest of the ad, which is why a good headline is the most important part of the copy. Some other tips for writing more effective headlines is to surround them with quotation marks, especially if the place you are advertising will let you do that. Now, Google might not, but a lot of other sites will, uh, and newspapers certainly will. Quotes have been proven to attract more attention than a headline, so use them to your advantage. For example, you could do like a quote, discover how to stay at home and make more money, end quote. Another way <clears throat> to attract attention to the ad is asking a question. And this is a very effective way of pulling the reader in and getting them emotionally involved in your ad. For example, are you looking for financial freedom? Are you ready for a change? My personal favorite, tired of being overweight? <laughs> Need an extra paycheck? Now that we have talked about the headline, let's look at the ad copy itself. Using facts and figures instead of generalities in ad copy is another time-proven method that really works. Don't say money-back guarantee. Say 100% money-back guarantee. Don't say, increase your productivity. Say, increase your productivity by 40%. There is also an important aspect to consider when writing effective classified ads. Use power words. What are they? Power words are those proven or pulling words, also known as trigger words. These will help you get the results you're looking for in your ad copy. Here's a short list. 100% guaranteed. Proven. Discover, exclusive, incredible, effective, results fast, valuable, revealing, magic, and secrets. You'll also need 
to create a sense of urgency when you're writing an ad. If people don't sense urgency, they aren't likely to click on your link. Limited time offers are perfect for achieving this. Especially, ads focusing on holidays work well. Make sure your customers feel the need to click on your link now. You also have to reach your target audience. If your product is for a certain group of people, target your ad specifically to that group. You don't have to appeal to everyone if they aren't going to be interested in making a purchase. And finally, offer something free. People don't usually surf the internet ready to buy. Lure them to your site with something free whenever possible. Free is a very powerful word. An example of good ad copy using power words might be, quote, how to stay at home and make more money, end quote. Discover this proven system that allows you to work from home and earn money fast and easy. It's simply amazing. Act now. Free online presentation at www.yourdomainname.com. So I would like to conclude by saying the key to writing an effective classified ad lies in your ability to say a lot with just a few words. In other words, if I am your customer, you have to grab my attention, tell me about the best benefits of your product or service, and command me to buy from the website in 50 words or less. Now we will cover a few other important elements of good ad copy and review some of the things we've covered. Hey, thank you, Jeff. And you gave some excellent advice there. Thank you. So like we said earlier, okay, guys, we need to observe other people's and companies' ads for ideas. You have to look around and see what caught your attention, what didn't. Now you have to use that to your benefit, okay? Your ad will be most effective when it promotes a product to a targeted market, okay? You got to figure out who your customer is and target the ad to them. Like we said earlier, both Jeff and I said this earlier, the headline is the most important part of the ad. Try to keep it short and snappy and use action words that appeal to the emotions of the customer and, or ask a question and catches their attention and gets them to read the rest of your ad. Just like Jeff did at the end there when he wrote, uh, read the ad, offer something free to readers and this will catch their attention right away. Okay? Now, with the body of the ad, keep it brief. Avoid giving too much information Use enough descriptive words to simply state what you are selling and still pique the customer's curiosity. You want the customer to go to your website. Now, this is very important, guys. Never be offensive or misleading, okay? Use your imagination when writing your ad to make it something different that will stand out. Set yourself apart from the competition. What makes what you offer unique. What makes your product unique? We all have the same websites. We all have the same products. What can you say that makes you unique? What are you offering to the customer that will help them in some way? You always have to say to yourself, why should a person click on my ad? Why did I click on an ad when I got started on this business? Avoid using all capitals, okay? It's hard to read and it's also considered rude, as if you are yelling. You know, you don't want to shout at your potential customers. The occasional word in capitals may help illustrate a point, but any more than that, you're just yelling. Also guys, avoid using excessive exclamation points. It makes your message seem like hype rather than just information. And people will flee, see through those exclamation points you know, to be safe, avoid them all together or only use one. End by telling the reader exactly how to respond to your ad. Keep it simple and make it easy. Always include an email address, a website address, or a phone number depending on where you are placing the ad and how you want to be contacted. Okay? Very important here. Always demand action from your customer. Deadlines encourage people to respond when their interest is the highest. 
be sure that you proof read and spell check your ads before placing them. Also be sure your website and email, email addresses are correct and in working order. One of the biggest reasons for poor ad response is the wrong contact information. The best way to do this is after you've created the ad and you've created the link, click on it yourself and see if that takes you to the right place. And you'd be amazed how many times you end up somewhere you didn't think you wanted to be. So make sure you check your link and make sure that it is in your ad properly. One of the keys to our business is the fact that we are able to track all our ads. So revise and test your ad over and over again. Test one revision at a time and track each ad by using the reference ID that is available to us on our website. This way you will know what ads are working and which ads are not and they need to be changed. And you know, as a final note, this is something that I do. I use a Word document and I write various eye-catching ads. I've got big ads, small ads, in order to fit the various ad sites that I go to. And remember what I was saying earlier about getting ideas from wherever I went? Well, when I get these ideas, this is where I file them away for future reference. And you do need to keep them organized. And, you know, we suggest copying all of your ads into a single document, separating them so you can quickly see the different ads that you have. When you go to advertise on the Internet, you need your ad. Just open the ad file, locate the ad you, you wish to use, and copy and paste it into the ad window. Now, this is important because some sites only give you a certain amount of time to create an ad before they time out. Also, this method saves you a lot of time and energy typing because you can quickly copy and paste the ad and move on to the next one. And finally, this, is all, this also allows you to have ads that are proofread and spell checked before you go to use them. Now, Larry, if people have questions, we can open up the lines for questions. Well, let's go ahead and open up the lines for questions. What I'd like to do is ask you all in advance before I open the line that if you have any background noise, if you would please press star six or the mute button on your phone to mute yourselves out. And the only people that we should be hearing from are the people who actually have the questions. So, Edward, I'm going to open up the line right now. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. What an incredible call. Uh, I know that we're going to see lots more hits and sign-ups and package orders going out the door because of the time you spent with us. Thanks again, you guys. Thank you. The lines are now open. Anybody with a question? I hope the line's open. Hang on a sec. Anybody there? Well, let's try it one more time. Hello? There we go. <laughs> Hi, who's this? This is Perla. Hello, Perla. Hi. Um, I. Edward, um, do you, do you um, when you're sitting and, and, and writing your ads, is this something that, like you do for a hobby? Do you do a lot of it? I do. I have probably three or four or five sets of documents now with all kinds of different ads. And when I bring new people on and they're looking for ideas, sometimes I will email a set of them so they have some ideas that they can use right away. Excellent. Great. Thank you so much. Great call, by the way. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Edward, this is Larry again. Uh, how do you feel about putting uh, an, abbrevi an abbreviation that says attention uh, in front of your, your ad to start with? If the site lets you, a lot of sites won't let you do things like that, I've found. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's tricky. Uh, um, a lot of sites just want you to put in the headline, put in the body, and get on with it. But mm -hmm. if the site lets you and you can do it, I mean, it's a way to, to attract attention to your site and try to get people to click on you. One of the tricks that I use, I will go to a site where I advertise and I'll look at the top 20 ads and see what are the same, what are different, and what catches my eye. And then I'll just copy those ads and, and file them away for future reference when I want to use them. Perfect. Thanks, Edward. Uh, Edward or Jeff? Hi. 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 This is Gene, Arizona. Hey, Gene. How you doing? Good, good, good. Um, do you start a lot of your ads with question marks or questions? 
I usually really want, don't, but some people do. I think it's good. I do. Uh, hey, Gene. No. A, a couple of my Google ones that are doing well right now um, that I recently switched. I switched to a question. Okay. And I, I I've gotten a few more hits um, on those ones, and um, it's just you know something I'm trying um, just so that I can have. Um, uh, so I can know what's happening. I have switched to, I used to just use a statement, and now I've switched to a question, and I'm getting a little uh, more action on that on that particular ad. I have probably five or six different Google ads going, and the ones, the two that I have with questions seem to be better, doing better than the other ones. Okay. I've got one that, Perla helped me with a whole bunch of them. <clears throat> and I've got one that's hitting pretty good, but no question. The other uh, one is hitting... Better, don't change it. <laughs> don't change it. No, I'm not the one that's doing that. well, don't change it. No, Let no. it do its job. Yeah. I got one at no click, so I'll change that one. Yes. Thank you. Sure. Hey, Edward, this is Larry again and Jeff. Mm -hmm. uh, would you also uh, agree that uh, somebody, once they've placed an ad, that they need to at least wait a couple of weeks to see the true results from that ad? Oh, definitely. Yeah, you, you, you've got to give it time to to see what's going to happen because of the cycle of the interest and the people and the activity on the site itself or the uh, the search engine itself. That, that comes and goes like any other business. And just so, because an ad hits right away, Jeff, would you agree that that doesn't mean that the ones that don't hit right away, that doesn't mean they're necessarily bad ads? No, but I, I wouldn't give them any more than, than two or three weeks. Yep. Yeah, if they, don't, if they don't pull after three weeks, I think I'd change it. Perfect. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hi. Hi. This is Dana in Nevada. I have some ads that I've had out for quite a while, and they get hit, but no package orders. So should okay. I, like, get rid of the whole ad or just... You can tweak it a little bit. Um, if you look at the ad, are you, like, would your ad that you've um, created there, does it get your attention? Um, I have to, yeah, I think so. I have to go okay. back and look at it. You have to, if it gets the person, like, not, like, remember what Jeff was saying, not everybody is a, is going to buy from us. We have lots and lots of potential customers, and if you target people who are looking for a business, those are the ones that are going to buy the decision packages, and those are the ones that become potential clients for us in the business. And... Do you just have the one place you advertise, or do you have different places that you advertise? I have um, three different places. Okay. And it's similar in all three places? Um, yeah, right now it is, yeah. Okay. You may want to look to see if you are actually describing some of the benefits that we have to offer. You know, is your ad getting the attention of the right kind of person that we're looking for? Edward, one of my questions would be on that, too, is how many hits are you getting from that ad, Dana? Um, probably around seven or eight a day, maybe ten a day. Edward, uh, Jeff, how many hits a day would you say a person should get uh, before expecting package orders to start going through? Well, yeah. uh, if seven seven a day is is a good response I found from an ad uh, from one from one search engine, and generally my stats kind of are falling where. After I get 30 hits, I generally have a package pass through. But that doesn't say, I mean, you could go through 60 and get two packages. It just averages out that one out of every 30 hits is a, is a decision package sale. And Edward, what's your opinion? Yeah, I think that kind of falls in line with the way um, I know my website works. If I get a decent uh, website sign up, um, I probably average somewhere mm -hmm. around 100 hits a day and um, I try to get packages out uh, through that way. Um, it, not everybody that comes to the website is going to buy a package, but if you can get the number of hits to be reasonably high, packages are going to move out. I mean, in good months, when I've had really good months, I've had lots of packages go, go out because I've had lots of hits in, in that given month. Would you say, Edward, that this, Dana, this particular question is maybe he might want to take a, a look at his ads and compare them to the notes 
that he's taken on this call to see if to see if they compare to what it is that you have. Uh, Please hang up and try again. <laughs> hey Dana, yeah, I mean, check your headline, see yeah. if you're kind of getting the right kind of person. You might be just not hitting the right kind of person. The, the people that may be coming to your website may be looking for a job or looking to stuff envelopes or something like that. So when they get yeah. to the site, they're like, oh, this is one I was looking for. I wasn't wanting to start up an Internet business. So look at the ad and see if you're focusing in on that, you know, what we were talking about earlier about the targeted group. Like when I write an ad, I kind of, in my mind, in the back of my mind, I always say, so why am I writing this ad and who's going to read this? Right. And so I'm looking for the guy who's interested in starting up a business. I'm looking for the guy who's, um, um, you know, serious and committed. And I kind of try to gear my ads towards that direction. Okay. So, yeah, I think that might be part of the problem. Any other questions out there? Yeah, this is Mike from Oregon. Can you hear me? Yes, yes we sure yep. can. Okay, I've, our retail ad has been hitting 23 to 32 hits a day for the last seven days, and we have nothing on it. Would it be safe to say that my headline's okay and the copy needs to change a little bit? Is this the sample pack site, or is this the site where people can fill out their information? No, it's a recruiting site. Oh, it's a recruiting site. Right. Okay. So you're you're just not getting the right type of people coming to your website. Correct. Edward, let, let me, uh, yeah, it sounded like he said he was had a retail ad and then had his recruiting site in as the, uh, as, as, as the end all, which means that, you know, people maybe who are looking to lose weight and then they end up on a recruiting site, well, they wouldn't order a package. Right. Yeah. Right. The, headline, the headline seems to be catching people. It's just that copy that needs tweaked in, right? Yeah. You're not getting the right type of person coming to your site. What is the headline? Um, <laughs> I no, that's a work at home opportunity, something like that. That's a good. That's a good headline. I mean, that's that says what it is. <clears throat> How long have you been running the ad? Uh, we just started in first of June, so it's been out for about two weeks now. <laughs> Give it a little more time. If you're getting okay. a good hits, give it a little more time. Edward, would you agree? Jeff, would you agree? Definitely. Yeah, I think I think there, if you are getting that many hits, let it do its job and see what happens. And follow the hits you're getting, too. Email something back to them right away. Okay, thanks a lot. Sure. Any other questions out there? Hi, well, Mark. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this is Sharon from uh, California. Um, on the retail side, I've been getting a lot of hits, but um, when it comes to buying, I, I just start picking up as far as sales go, but at the actual retail side, there is an awful lot of hits. So I, I'll get like 200 hits and maybe one pack, you know, one personal buy. Is that one, normal? One sample pack? No, no, this is the retail. Okay. Not the sample pack, it's the other... Okay. The ShapeWork site. Yes, the ShapeWork site. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> Are you following up right away when those people come to your site? Sure am. Okay. And what, are they just saying they're not interested or they are you not contact, getting in touch with them or what's happening? No, when I look at my stats, it shows like I'll get 200 hits. Yeah. But only one person maybe will sign up for a consultation and maybe only one person will sign up to buy out of that 200 hits, is that normal? That I do thing? better than that. I mean, I run a site where people can fill out their information for a consultation, and um, my ratio for people that come to my site to the people that leave their name and phone number, et cetera, is quite high. Um, and I run a very simple ad, and I've run that same ad probably about six to eight months, and I've never changed it. Yeah, I, I started. I had real good luck to begin with with the ads. I I had like thirty consultations in one week, but now it's slowing uh -huh. off. The last two weeks. Okay. And, and I'm getting, like I said, a lot of hits, but no. Um, not well. I had a, a pretty good sale the other day, but it. I, I'm just wondering how many hits would you compare to someone buying or a consultation? What would be the ratio you think? Hey, Larry. Yeah. 
Well, it would really depend on who you're appealing to and what your ad is. Uh-huh. Right? And one of the things you might want to do is get with your coach and, and let her take a look at what your ad is. Okay. And see who you're drawing to your site. Uh, because if you're drawing somebody to your site that isn't, uh, that isn't really interested in actually what you're selling, then it's going to hit your site and move on. Well, to right? begin with, I was getting a lot of 18-year-olds. Yeah. And so you I, know that your ad copy is appealing to 18-year-old kids. <laughs> but yeah, so I moved to a little bit more, and I, and I started getting some older you know, yeah. older people, and, and it seemed to be kicking up a little bit more. But I was just wondering what the ratio was as far as how many people do you think should hit before you get really get a, uh, or should, before you go in there and start tweaking things around. Well, I tell you, consultations are something that you should be getting if you're hitting if you're hitting the people that are interested in what you're what you're selling. And this is, in this case, it's retail, so it's products, whether it's weight loss or more energy or you know allergy. It's allergy season, guys. You should be advertising for that. If you have allergies, I'll tell you what, uh, you know, I had, uh, I was getting allergy shots four times a year. I don't do that anymore uh, right. because of these products. So it depends on who you're hitting, uh, who you're bringing to your site. All right. So don't let uh, that go around and tweak it. Right. Uh, you know, after a couple of weeks, go around and tweak it. I, and I'm sure that Edward and Jeff would agree with me on that after a couple of weeks. Uh, you want to be, because consultations, I'll tell you what, I mean, consultations, well, we can't even keep up with those. No, I can't. You know, we we have so many coming in that uh, you know people want consultations that it's it's tough to keep up with. So if you're not even getting consultations, no. I, then then you're not appealing to the right people. Okay, yeah, thank it's you. time to uh, get another there. point too. If you're if you're posting your ad on Nickelodeon, you're, you're not likely to get older people. You know. No, no, I'm just on Yahoo. Yahoo's okay. Yeah, but Yahoo might be younger audience than Google even. I don't know. I don't have much luck with Yahoo. Mama. I got a lot of hits, but no decision pack sales. And Google was the opposite. I got a lot of hits and a lot of decision pack sales, both. Well, so. I'm just starting in the decision pack, but I, what I was doing before was just the retail. Yeah, in this yeah. case, you were talking about retail there, Jeff. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah. and with Google, I mean, I, I have my retail site advertised on Google, and I do quite well with the number of people that come to the site. And I get a lot of people who are looking for consultations. I mean, I get also the hits from the 15 and 18 year olds, and I just email them back, and just um, that's it. I leave it at that. But I do get a lot of people who are interested in buying the products after I call them and talk to them. Okay, thank you. Anybody else? Anybody else have a question for Edward or Jeff, and or Jeff? Hi, it's Marg. Hi. Hi. I don't have a question. I just wanted to say thanks a lot for the call. I learned a lot. Good. Cool. That's great. Gang, being able to draw people, uh, all the Internet advertising and ad copy and all that is all about bringing people, having them walk in your direction, right? They run into you. Uh, you'd agree with that, wouldn't you, Edward? Yes. You know, we are looking for those people who are interested, and we have to talk to them directly and bring them. We've got to use the ad to bring them to our web website and then let the website do the job that it's designed to do. If Perfect. they turn away from our website, you know, it wasn't meant to be. But if they put in for a consultation or if they put in for a Z call or if they order a, a decision package, great. The, the website did the job that we uh, wanted it to do. Well, uh, Jeff and Edward, both of you guys, thanks for all your research, all your time invested and in giving back to the system. Uh, we really appreciate the time that, that you've spent doing that because uh, we all know that, uh, that it's not uh, easy uh, when, you're, uh, when you have a, a family of five kids and you're working full-time in your own business and all that, Edward. We really appreciate your time. And uh, it just uh, goes to show that uh, when you write good ad copy, uh, you've got time to build your business. So thanks again, Edward and Thank Jeff, you. both of you. Thank you. Appreciate, appreciate your time. Your time. Have Thank a great you. night, everybody. Uh, come on and say hello and where you're from and say goodbye at the same time. <laughs> Hi, this is Sharon from California. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. It's T-Rat from Toronto. Hi, this is Annie from California. Bye. Thanks. It was a good uh, call. This is Anne from Mike New York. Diana. I appreciated it. Mike and Diane from Oregon. Thanks a lot. Hi, Hi guys. Donna Thanks. From California. Um, Great call. Thank you. Bye. This is Cassie from Ontario.
Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jeff. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy from Pennsylvania, thank you for the great call. You're welcome. Hi, it's Mark from Ontario. Thanks a lot. David from Ontario, thanks a lot.